Here comes the bride, again. Meghan teams Diana's dazzling aquamarine ring from her big day with a wedding-ready white gown inspired by a Greek goddess to meet Tonga's king and queen with Harry. The Duchess of Sussex paid a sweet tribute to her wedding day by wearing a bridal-inspired white gown and Tonga tonight, teamed with the same heirloom ring she wore on May 19. Meghan dazzled in a white column dress by A-list favorite Thea, her third outfit of the day as she joined Prince Harry for a black tie reception with the King of Tonga at Nukalofa's royal palace. The couture design bore a striking resemblance to the Stella McCartney dress that Meghan wore for her wedding reception in Windsor, which she also teamed with the aquamarine ring that once belonged to Princess Diana. Hours after arriving on the South Pacific island on Thursday, Harry and his pregnant wife visited Consular House in central Nukualofa for a private audience with His Majesty King Tupu VI and Queen Nana Zipo'u. Afterwards they attended an official reception and dinner, followed by traditional Tongan entertainment, arriving to a band playing Imagine by John Lennon. The dress cap sleeve beaded silk satin column gown is said by the designer to use the Greek goddess Thea as a source of inspiration and was embellished with beading and embroideries. Tonight's dinner reception came after another whirlwind day of engagements for the couple, who began Thursday with a statue unveiling in Fiji, before flying to Tonga where Meghan was left red-faced when fans spotted she had left the returns label on her £380 dress. The Duchess still had the tag hanging from her self-portrait dress as she walked along a red carpet to the sounds of local singers wearing grass skirts at Fuamatu Airport in Nukualofa, the country's capital. Tongan school children were among the crowds who lined the streets of the island nation to welcome Harry and Meghan on Thursday. Dressed in their school uniforms and waving the Tongan flag, the excited youngsters cheered as the royal entourage drove past. The couple's Tonga visit, which saw Meghan advised to take care of herself when she met a Russian doctor, is the most remote part of the couple's 16-day tour, which also includes Australia, Fiji, and New Zealand. In the evening after their arrival, the couple were driven to Consular House for an audience with King Tupu VI and Queen Nana Zipo'u before a reception and dinner. At the reception they met an array of dignitaries, including Justice Charles Cato, a New Zealand judge and his Russian wife Miriam. Mrs. Cato said, I asked, how does she feel? She responded, very well, thank you. I said, no visible signs yet. As a doctor I was a bit concerned too about her taking all these long trips. I'm a mother of two. I know how it feels. I asked her to take care of herself. She promised to do so. Pregnancy also came up in the conversation when the couple met Melanie Danji, 72, who recalled meeting Charles and Diana at a garden party in Auckland during the couple's tour of New Zealand in 1983. 1983, replied Harry. That's the year before I was born. Was she pregnant? Secretly. The couple met an array of government ministers at the reception, including the environment minister. Harry told him that he was a very important man as he and Meghan discussed with him the effect of global warming on sea levels. He told the education minister, thank you for giving the school children the day off to line the street from the airport. It was very nice to see so many Tongan flags. They also met a Japanese couple, prompting a conversation about the forthcoming Rugby World Cup in Japan. The Duke said, I am looking forward to the World Cup. I hope Japan gets to the final, or even wins. After all, they beat South Africa four years ago. The reception was followed by a dinner hosted by the King and Queen. The King, who succeeded to the throne after the death of his brother, King George Tupu V, was educated in Britain and served in the Tongan naval forces before taking on a succession of government roles, including Prime Minister. Earlier in the day she had worn the green Jason Wu dress for her last engagement in Fiji and a red self-portrait number for her arrival in the Tongan capital, which mirrored the country's national flag. They arrived in the Pacific nation today for the latest leg of their tour. Harry and Meghan left Nadi in western Fiji on a Qantas charter plane for Tonga, and were met at Fuamatu Airport by Princess Angela Kalacha Fupka. The royal couple then walked the red carpet, accompanied by traditional entertainment from Pulhaik villagers. Schoolchildren had been given the day off and lined the streets from the airport to the capital of Nukualofa waving flags and cheering as the convoy made the 40-minute journey. Earlier in the day, before leaving Fiji, 
The Duke unveiled a memorial for a British Fijian soldier who died at the Battle of Merbat. Sergeant Talayasi Labalaba, of the Special Air Service, SAS, single-handedly held off 250 insurgents with a 25-pounder field gun after being shot in the jaw during the battle in Oman in 1972. He was part of a nine-strong SAS team based outside Merbat when they were attacked by the Popular Front for the liberation of the occupied Arabian Gulf. Sergeant Lab al was posthumously mentioned in dispatches for his bravery in battle. Harry also gave a speech, beginning with the traditional Fijian greeting Bula, and adding, Thank you to the people of Fiji for the warm welcome we have received during our visit.